Ah, most esteemed administrator, you have been brought to this location, the banks of the Wei River, so that you might establish the town of Baoji. The local waters will provide fish to supplement the wheat crop. However, it is the rocks that hold the most value, as their deposits of copper can be fashioned into bronze, and the bronze into elaborate ceremonial vessels dearly needed at our capital of Xiang. Because of this, expect the king to make annual requests for bronzeware. To help alleviate the costs of these industries, taxes should be levied upon the populace. Locate an appropriate site for an administrative city and hire some tax collectors. But look also beyond the capital, for there is profit aplenty to be had. You can barter off excess quantities of hemp and wheat, and jade can be imported and then fashioned into beautiful carving by skilled craftsmen. Welcome back to Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom. So we are now at Baoji, and we have four trading partners, profit of 1,200, so definitely going to be a more involved trading mission. And the profit number, if we get four trading partners, that should not be an issue at all. We've got bronze industry to deal with, the government buildings are back, and interesting that they want to, us to trade off even excess food, so we'll see how that works out. Beginning with this scenario, I'm going to begin jumping in a little further into the map. It started in February, this is now October. And just get the first basic buildings up, your mill, your initial market, you know, food shop, food sources, your housing circle, and then just sort of look at the map without all that initial grind being repetitive. So, this really was a key point, the only good anchor point that I could put on both towers in a sensible way for the housing loop. Inspector's Towers have very limited places they can be put, and we're pretty much going to use all of them. Uh, you know, and you can see there's several of them, but it's hard to fit them in and then fit everything else in you need around them. Like, I couldn't have fit a second one here to have the Watchtower, for example, and start my housing out here. So, the loop, I was going to put it this way, but couldn't quite put as much housing as I want, so it aims this way. And then I sort of just built everything else around that just finished here with our farm that's producing the wheat got a couple fishing keys down here by the water served by that tower and then the new stuff that we're working on is the bronze industry over here so we've got our bronze smelter and these the bronzeware makers first time we've seen those they need clay as well so they have to have clay and bronze to properly work that one has just gone up, and now what we want to do is we have just recently finished our first harvest of wheat, giving us enough food supply for this first season. And I want to get another bronze maker up over here. And then I think I'm also going to have enough for another clay pit. wait for some more people to come in. The next industry I want is ceramics. And roughly, I'll put up another bronzeware maker later, but roughly, you know, the bronze and clay will supply just over two of these. Okay, so let's get another, let's get a kiln up now. And we actually need a warehouse also, so I'm going to place that. And there's really only two good places I found for them. One of them is right here. So let's go ahead and throw that in place. I want to move this over here. And then we will, for now, let's just take off everything else. We're going to accept bronzeware, let's say 12, and ceramics, perhaps 8. Then we'll change those numbers as we go. Now, you can see as we do this, like we have these profoundly stupid arrangements of these gates. But basically I need the market people to be able to come through here and come down this way, but not go through there. And so that's why all those are in place. The inspector can come through this one, etc. And not enough clay yet. Oh, they're still taking all the clay over here to the bronze where they don't want to give it to our ceramics yet. Probably can fit one more kiln up eventually here. Maybe. Might be one person short. Yep, we're going to be. We're going to be stuck with just the one for now. Okay. 
So we do have the possibility. I don't need to use it yet, but we have the one trading station able to get a trading agreement with Xiang at the capital. But the other ones will reject any initial offers. I didn't even send them out to those. So Bon Po and Bo will have to wait. And of course, we only have three different settlements that we know about. And we need to have at least four trading partners. So we'll be waiting for new targets for our wares, if you will, to be revealed. Meanwhile, as usual, we are waiting on we're going to need to get hemp in the next year here, which is coming up soon. And then we'll be able to evolve our housing further and move on with additional industry. Now our kiln is working. We don't have any bronze wear out yet, but they're both steadily working away on it. Well, too bad. We're not going to bother with that. Okay, so let's return our labor then here. And then we'll turn off the ceramics for now to have enough people to do that. We do have Shen Nong and Nu Hua once again and have not paid any homage to them. I... Per usual, I don't plan on giving them enough to actually have them come into the city, just enough to keep them from getting too upset. We have a little bit of time, though, before that happens. Here comes our first bronze wear. Now, some of these copper guys are rather entertaining. More copper, more copper. It seems all they ever do is dig more copper for the boss man. More copper, more copper. Yeah, okay. There is a second line that they use, but they don't want to say it right now. Alright, let's get let's get our hemp going as well. And we're gonna need to turn off Yeah. So eight workers left. See where we are at. We've got one bronze and one clay there. One of each there as well. So I'm just going to turn off one of these. Keep the others going for now. And that's about all we can really do at the moment. We've just got to wait for them to bring in the next season's worth of yield from the farms. We've got the second wheat harvest going on now. We need to create a little room for it. Make some adjustments to our warehouse. Accept the overflow there. And while we're at it, we are going to want to gather up some wood eventually. And some hemp. Once it gets harvested. And we'll stick with that for now. As soon as this is all out, we can actually... Oh, well, we have something new going on. Siang wants bronzeware for the first time. Send us four. Thankfully, we have just enough for that. We don't have any bronzeware, but the capital is happy. So I guess I'll take it. Population holding. We've been juggling some back and forth with this, but we're able to keep at least one of the bronze ware producers going. Okay, and now we're going to yank this labor out and get busy elsewhere. We're going to need a hemp shop. We're going to need to activate this over here because since we're going to be harvesting hemp, we need to bring this trade agreement into being. And this whole area down here is a really nice trade station area. But we have to be careful with this inspector's tower and make sure it's only going this direction. Roadblocks, as always. We're going to sell here any surplus 
ceramics, hemp, or wood. I'm not going to import the millet just yet. And here comes our hemp being harvested. And I think we've got, you know, enough wheat here now. Oh, they want to take some. Banpo needs four bushels of wheat. Well, we can afford that. There you go. And relations are good with Siang. But I want to upgrade now our food to plain. To go along with the hemp sales. And that should begin to boost our housing in here once it all gets moved around. Now with as far away as this warehouse is, it's going to take quite a while to unload the hemp, unfortunately. We have to leave all that labor where it's at. Oh, we do have just enough people to turn that second bronze war on, so we'll do that. Of course, the fishing operation continues. More bronzeware coming in. Okay, we are have increased the food now. Yep, we're starting to get more upgrades in to attractive cottages from the plain cottages. And now we can really start to accelerate the development. The road is full of new immigrants. And Bonpo is happy, so... Let's see if they're happy enough to be our second trade partner. And we're up over 500. So to take the next step, of course, we need a music school. We'll plop that down here. We're also going to need the herbalist stall. One worker short. Well, move, hurry up and move in then. Now I want to make sure, because I want to do the farming year round. So I'm just going to hold on here a minute. So we have enough people and just turn this back on so I don't forget. There we go. High unemployment temporarily a problem. And now I want to get ceramics going. This time I won't be turning it off. Play pit. Nope, I'm not quite enough confident in our supplies to do that. I should, yeah, let's turn this kiln on. But I should also start bringing in the uh, millet, I think it's time. Drop down to four. Okay, let's get another kiln rolling. Just gonna have the two here. I don't wanna have a big ceramics industry, just enough. And next up, we want to start the logging to move towards the governmental side with the administrative city. Okay. Nomad camps discovered and emissary from Siang is going to give us some cash. We'll take it. And we do have a trade agreement with Ban Po. I don't know that I want to deploy that just yet, but I want to save the labor here to get this administrative city going. I do think I will throw a bone to Shen Nong. Let's give you a bit of bronzeware. Bronzeware is really effective. As an homage offering, so that should... Keep them tolerably happy for a while. Oh yeah. 
Here we go. We're getting close. And there we have 40. So, administrative city. Khufu discovered. Come on. If you'll give me the right angle I want. There we go. Of course, it just needs to be by a road. Inspector's not necessary. And then let's round off that whole project by throwing the tax office over here. I sort of, I have the ancestral shrine there just to try to negate some of the negative desirability effects from the tax office. But the wood beginning to flow and then we'll get some taxes going. And I want to have, I'm going to extort as much as I can. Since we need a lot of profit, I'm going to extort as much as I can from the people. Not exactly the most uh, benevolent ruler thing to do, but we're going to do it anyway. And I don't think I built... I did not build a ceramic shop. This is here. So we're ready to move up to appetizing food, and that'll get us our final population boost that we're looking for. Of course, the new farming season has arrived. Tax office now beginning its work. And I think when we get everything under control here, I'm going to want to move into a warehouse, second warehouse. So ceramics is going strong. We're up to appetizing food with fancy rolls with millet. Okay, whatever floats your boat. We're getting a little bit low on wheat here, but we're going to be harvesting some more in a bit. And we're ready for the warehouse. Okay, so let's throw that over here. And then trickle back this road. I could put it a little bit closer, but I do eventually want to get more over there. I'm gonna let's just clear everything out. Okay, so you can accept wheat for the moment and fish. There we go. I do want because producing just a little bit more bronze than these two will be able to handle. It'll be idle most of the time, but I still want to put a third uh, bronzeware maker up. And I think we're ready for it. And the nomad camps, ready to do business with the world. Siang demanding more bronzeware. Three more, okay, fine. Just get off my back. And I think it's time now to extend invitations to everybody else. So we're gonna try to open trade with Khufu. We're gonna try to open trade with Bo and also the nomad camps. And we'll see what they think of us. Okay, so 14 people unemployed, I'm down to 5 now. And 800 cash, so I want to be a little bit careful with what I do here. We are still bringing in, you know, the millet from time to time. So I think all I can really afford at this point is one more trading station. We'll put the one up for Bon Po, but that's it. Yeah, population up over a thousand. And I need to be a little more secure with the finances. We can sell any excess, um, really nothing here. Yeah, we don't want to import anything either. Okay, that's just, that's not going to do us a whole lot of good at the moment yet. Until we can invest in other things. Because I want to hang on to the fish and wheat for potentially selling more. I want to see what the other trade options are. Let's lower our wage rate. That'll help us with the money. 500 and change. Siang is happy. Khufu says no. What do you want, Khufu? You want wood, hemp, bronzeware, and silk. 
how are we on bronzeware? Five. Once we get up to eight, then I'll try to bribe them, or perhaps with wood. Now, our expenses are much higher than income just because of all the construction that we've done. So we're definitely not going to turn a profit this year. We have a chance to get closer to that next year. Yes, yeah, sell all the hemp. Bo says no, and Nomad Camp say no. What do they want? Bo also wants bronzeware. We don't have the other two things it needs. Nomad Camps needs silk and wheat. So if we build up enough of a surplus of wheat, we could bribe the nomad camp with it. And then probably bronzeware to bow and wood to Khufu. I think that's where I want to go with that. We don't have enough of either yet, but we're working that way. There you can see, here's an example, all three of these going at once. It won't happen that often, but Get that little bit of extra bronze wear production out. Buying up all our hemp. Thank you very much. Gets us up over a thousand. I mean, this is where I want to stick with the population. Over a thousand. Should be plenty for our needs. And they went and took more wood away. Bronzeware, seven. So we need one more. Just need one of you to finish up. You're mostly done. And you're just about done. So yeah, we'll get that in. I think I want to stop having wood here, or wheat here rather. Let's only have it up at the other warehouse. Your wood's up to three. So I definitely want to send out those bribes soon. I'm going to wait, I think, for one more wheat harvest. Send out the Nomad Camps ones, because I don't think we have... We've got a good amount. We don't have that much extra. Let's wait one more round. Okay, so now let's let's do this. Khufu, we are going to send you a gift of four stacks of wood, and we'll do that again later if we have to. Bo, we're going to give you bronzeware. And then, of course, if the wood isn't enough for Khufu, we can always send them more bronzeware later on. Okay, we've got an emissary from the Nomad Camps. Wants to give us uncut jade, but we don't have room. Okay. Well, let's definitely agree to that. Let's open this up to jade for the moment. So then what we'll want to do is we'll want to put up a jade carver. We can make some good money off of this gift that they want to give us. This is one of those areas where this map... For feng shui reasons, like, we can't do that much with jade, because this will work, and then we can extend this a little bit for another one here, but if we try to, you know, come up more this way, there's just enough room for everything to fit. And what we'll end up losing, and we don't care if a painting of us has plummeted, frankly, we'll end up having this inspector be overloaded trying to do everything it needs to do. So that's not going to be helpful. We, once again, are going to go back to not accepting Jade for the time being. And if we try to put, like, a Jade Carver Studio other places, it's just, it's bad feng shui, like, basically everywhere. If we were to try to, there's a spot over here where you can sort of slot it in, but it, there's no actual good way to get a road there. That's, you know, with all the trees and everything, without knocking those down, which would violate the challenge, so... You can make really good money on Jade on this map, but they're just it just isn't going to work out for us. 
any case, this is coming here. And we can now put up selling the carved jade. Okay, Khufu is happy with the wood. Let's see what they say about a trade request then. Once we get this wheat harvest in, we can think about going a little further. Profit is not high enough yet. Once we start selling that jade, that'll help. For me to really just go all in and invest a bunch. Like I want to build a new wheat farm, but we don't have the money. So, and of course, still have to pay for the millet as it comes in. So we're making a profit, but not a not an overwhelming one. We've still got, yeah, I've still got about eight of the wheat. I think I can send a good amount of wheat off to the nomad camps once this comes in. And definitely uh, doing work here on the trees. Of course, there's a lot more bronze, but again, you know, fitting in more bronze smelters and all the supporting structures with proper feng shui, just not, not really an option. Trade with Khufu and Bo have been approved. Okay, so that that would give us four. I mean, I still want to get the Nomad Camps because, if, you know, there's five possible ones. Why not do the most that we can? We are highly unpopular. God, they don't like being extorted as much as we are. I'm going to, now that our money situation is a little bit better, I'm going to reduce that some. We'll go down to normal. Okay, so let's go about looking at the nomad camps. And we will send them a gift of wheat. We'll see if that's enough. And eventually, presumably, they're going to come back and grab the rest of this. Okay, so... I think the next thing I want is actually the farm. And then I'll build more trade. We're not going to have any more housing, so you're just going to have to chill with that. Not having immigration deal. Oops, I missed a row. There we go. And I didn't leave place for the road. Dog got it. There we are. So next year we will have additional farming. And we're low on workers, so we'll up the wage rate back to normal. Let's see, we've still got a thousand left. Let's go ahead and throw in. I'm only going to throw in one of them for now.
Another option for selling wood and hemp. We can sell excess bronze ware here. And yeah, let's import some jade. Only a couple at a time, though. Particularly with where our... <laughs> Where our cash is at the moment. And then I don't think we need. I'm gonna back off on the bronzeware a little bit. Let's back off to eight there and then sell the excess. Yeah, they're still happy. I don't have to do any more homage offerings for a while. We've got the rest of the wheat over here. Okay, the nomad camps are happy. So let's go ahead and send them a trade request. And we wouldn't make enough money this year anyway to hit the 1200 profitability. So I'm not in too much of a hurry to get the fourth uh, trading area up. But I think we're at the point where we're going to start aiming for that 1200 positive next year. And our total wheat is at, yeah, nine. That should be sufficient. Fish is looking good. We're starting to stockpile quite a few things to sell here. Oh yeah. I didn't even actually buy it all. We're gonna sell some bronzeware now. Because the bronzeware price, I mean, it's 180 is nice. It's not like you know, carved jade at 230. But it's still really profitable. So I think I think that's enough. I think we're going to throw down our trading station with Bo. See what they have to say. Okay, we can sell bronzeware, sell carved jade. We're not interested in your wood, wood hemp, or ceramics, so we're just going to be selling to you. And there we go. Do we have enough people? We do not. So if we want to establish trade with them, we would have to increase our wage rate. But I think we're going to want to do that anyway. So let's see if we can sustain high wage rate and then also high taxes. And of course, it didn't increase the estimated tax much because we're almost at the end of the year. Let's... I want to get that up before the end of the year because it won't affect our annual profit if we throw this trading station in now. And then whatever else we want to build with it. So let's buy some more jade from you. And we can export wheat and silk. So we'll sell wheat. Let's see, you don't have any. You're interested in our fish. We can sell wheat and fish there. Nope, good there, good there. Okay. So let's get up the second jade carver that I was talking about. Nope, not yet. Block that off. And come down to just about there. And yep, I switched over the next year because I wasn't being cautious. Oh well. I need I still want to build up more. still not happy with us even if with high wage rate fine we'll drop it back down to normal now with our warehouse back up here I want let's just have an overflow of four wheat and four fish and whatever else we produce sell and then where's our labor at? We have 24 so assuming that holds stable, I have no reason to think it won't. We actually have the room then to build a couple more fishing keys. So I'm going to do that. Just produce more of that to sell. Just using up the rest of that labor. Ooh, boy, went down to zero. Now it says we're invited to every celebration. So apparently normal is where I need to keep the tax rate at in order to make people happy. So we'll do that. And I've just got to be cautious now. Yeah, but we low on cash, but now look at that going back up. And 
now the question becomes, you know, where's our profit going to end up? And right now we're looking at plus 17, but we should definitely be more positive than that. We're going to make it to 1,200. You know, we're putting up the Jade Carver and putting up the, the fishing areas. I'm not sure if we'll make that or not. But I think that we've got enough in place here now. We can definitely make that amount of profit. So it's just a case of seeing where the cost goes. And there we go. Price of carved jade has risen by 7. So importing it's costly, but higher profits can be made as well. And it actually hasn't changed our price. So... You know, I'm not sure what all that's about. We might be able to haggle with them and get more, but, you know, as before, I'm not going to bother with that. And these camel bearing traders are the nomads. It's been a long, dusty road, but I finally arrived to unpack this heavy load. That's just sort of the way that they're distinguished. Instead of having donkeys pull their wagons. Plus 46. Like you're definitely not... Not yet, anyway. Maybe once we get, you know, some more out of the jade carvers. But we're not yet making nearly enough money to threaten the 1200 mark. Now, what a surprise! They want more bronze ware. Go ahead, take it, eat into my profits, why don't you? We have... We have been able to, you know spike up here. We're already up to 600 and change, so we could still make it this year. We've got enough different products coming through in enough volume. And I think we're going to end up selling some of this wheat, some more fish towards the end. We'll see. Could be tight, but I think we got a shot at making it now. More jade carvings coming in. And the nomad camps are having famine. They demand that they s we send them 11 food, 11 bushels of wheat while we have it. The question is how much we're going to have left when we're done. Glad they asked now and not, you know, a little bit later after we'd sold a bunch of this. They should, they should, they have some room over here, don't they? Yeah, I'm assuming they'll bring it there before they bring it to the trade station, I hope. Wow, look at our look at our profit here now we're getting some more of this. So oh, it looks like we're gonna crush that that twelve hundred mark even with you know, them taking our bronze ware. Let's just take another look at Shen Nong. Still pretty happy. So that one gift of bronze ware was pretty much all we needed to pacify the ancestors for years. Siang is happy. Seventeen hundred to the good. We just need to not screw up now for the next few months, and this is in the victory column. Well, year coming to an end here, and we're still looking very strong. Look like we end up around two thousand, or perhaps even more, as they buy a bunch of things. Just so many different products going out. A real trading hub now here in Baoji. This is the, mo the most complicated economy that I've had to manage yet. A lot of fun. We got 3,000. So yeah, we're just... We're printing the money here now. Your skill at city planning and management is matched equally by your skill at manipulating trade and turning a healthy profit. It is not a small thing to say that our mighty ruler, the Great Tang, 
is more than pleased with your performance. Well, that's good to hear. So now we have completed along the way and it's time for us to move on to our next challenge, which is actually going to be in a settlement that we've seen before. That'll be coming up next on Emperor. Till then, thanks for watching, everyone.